Okay, so a little bit, a little bit different today. We don't have a a, a lot to announce at this all call. This is more just again us getting together, seeing each other face to face, uh, get an opportunity to get the squad and check your email, catch up with your flight command, your flight chief, right? Uh, there's some things I'm going to ask you to do that we're trying to get squared away with a computer refresh. We're trying to go through, so we're trying to get some bright and shiny new computers and our bright and shiny new squadrons. So we remodeled it last year, but first we got to get a bunch of serial numbers. There was a thread that I'll talk to you about here a little bit later. It's on Slack that is Hunter pushed out. But I need all you guys the full court press. There's a there's a uh, mustache march uh, reference there. Full court press for basketball, right? On uh, on getting those serial numbers off your laptops uh, in the squad. But before we do that, it's embarrassed one of our uh, longtime pilots, Mr. Double Deuce. Roger, uh, Mr. Roger Ray, come up here. Soon me, Mr. Roger Ray. Uh, as he goes over to uh, um, to the CRG, Sim, uh, SimStar, and he's going to be uh, one of the instructors over there. He's the first officer in the Double Deuce that has done the uh, uh, skills bridge. We did that with Chief, right? Stigel went down to work with uh, McDonald Douglas, but now, now we've got uh, Major Ray who's going to do that and be one of the instructors over there. So he'll be now. Uncle Ray, if you have a reference to one. That's a good Uncle Ray, not, not the bad. So, uh, definitely an improvement. Um, I'm looking forward to that. First, let's just talk about uh, Roger a little bit. Oh. I love embarrassing you guys. We have Kathleen's wife. You guys are married for uh, over a year now. A uh, year in April. It was a year. Okay, a year in April. Sorry. I was thinking about the proposal, sorry. Oh, yeah. We're going to get that. <laughs> get that in a so, uh, Major Roger Ray uh, has been with us for almost six years. I think it's only one of my pilots been here longer, and that's Adam Smith. Is that your he's statement? That's been here longer. I, I won't be here when I leave, sir, but he's been here longer. Than okay. Long. So, <laughs> yeah, so the, the most experienced and the longest lived double deuce pilot we have here. So, this is a sad day for me. You know, obviously, Roger and I have worked together. Uh, significantly, both when I was a DO and I was a commander, he was an ADO, chief of training, uh, awards and decks before that, flight commander, CAG. He's done, he's done like every job. I mean, that's a common theme we have with folks that have been here six years at Travis. Like you get, you get pushed around, especially if you're good. You get pushed around a lot of different jobs to make a lot of different impacts. And, and Roger's done that. Uh, so six years, we've had four commanders, right? Uh, seven or eight DOs. I try to count. Uh, some count. There's a lot. Okay, there's been a lot. There's been a lot of DOs we've had coming through uh, with all their different leadership styles. We have six chiefs that have come through that you've worked with and and, and four. Uh, so a lot of leadership change. But one thing probably remains the same. It's kind of the culture that is the double D's, and that's something that not many squatters do. Like these heritage events, and do an all call every Friday. It's re you know reemphasize what we're about. We do that, and as you get new leadership that comes in. You don't have the squadron to assimilate the leadership. Kind of leadership kind of assimilates into what the squadron is. That's special, and you won't see that very often as you move around the Air Force and you leave the W's eventually. So, when Roger and I sat down and we just, you know, had that opportunity to reflect for an hour, I, I tell you guys, I asked the same kind of core question: like, where are you going? Which I already alluded to what that is. Uh, which, what are you most proud of in your service in, uh, in the Air Force and the Double Deuce? What's your favorite memory in the Double Deuce? And then what advice do you have to give to the rest of the team? Because there's a story to each one of uh, our folks that come through this squadron. And it's a, a story of personal life. It's a story of, of a dedication and double deuce, a story of what's going to happen next, and kind of those favorite memories that, that contribute to what they are and what they leave behind uh, in their legacy. So uh, most proud of, um, and this kind of speaks to your character, and I, and I know this for Roger, is he's most proud of his impact as an instructor and an officer and leader uh, in the double deuce and, and in the active duty air force, he's obviously going over to the reserves uh, and then going to be an, uh, an instructor over at the CRG as a mister. Uh, so, uh, or SimStar as a mister. So, this is a theme. You hear me talk about this. Like, we, we retired Sam Trujillo, Master Sergeant Sam Trujillo, last week. Uh, we've had a few other goodbyes with folks. Everyone kind of says the same thing. They're most proud of the contribution they've made. And that goes to quality of service. Is every, Heard of that term before quality of service. We've heard quality of life before, and that's hey, do I have time with my family? Do I have an opportunity to chase things that, like, like hobbies and things that make me happy outside of work? That's quality of life. Quality of service is a flip side of that coin. It's when you spend time with this uniform on, is it worthwhile? Are you proud of it? Is it something that you remember and tell your kids and tell your grandkids later down the line? 
the answer is yes, that's a high quality of service. When you walk out and you may be tired after a 12 hour day, or you may be just exhausted after a 24 hour duty day flying the mission on that beautiful plane. Like when you walk away though, and you're just dead tired, you have a smile on your face. Like you look ragged, but you have a smile on your face. That's quality of service. That's something good. That's wholesome and something we hold on to that there are very few people on this planet that are gonna have the opportunity to be not only in this squad, fly that aircraft and do what we do with the uniform we wear. So Roger Ray, again, super proud of that quality of service he's gonna be able to provide both to the squadron and what he takes with him going forward. Favorite memory, and I remember this favorite memory. And this is when I say favorite memory, it's like the most memorable event, we probably say, that you had in the in the 22nd. It was last year. So rewind the clock, uh, what about 14 months now or 13 and a half months? It was New Year's, New Year's Day 2020, and you were in Kirkwood up uh, in Tahoe, and you're uh, proposing to Kathleen, right? Um, and does everybody know or remember what happened on New Year's Day? I remember. I know Bless remembers because I was the DO, and the night before, Pollock and I were sitting in one of the other squadron commanders, uh, actually, it was his living room. We're drinking scotch responsibly. Um, we're waiting for the, you know, to, the, for the ball to drop in, in New York City, and we all, our phones start blowing up. What? Like the link manager's calling us, the group commander's texting the DOs, and I'm like, what's going on? And all of a sudden, Iran is doing various stuff into Iraq, right? Attacking one of our one of our installations there and all of a sudden. And what happens? The next day, like the last probably got the text, the ADO on call phone. He's he's proposing, and then his phone like blows up. Like he gets off his knee and his phone's like bling bling. He's like, Oh, this isn't good. You know, this is not, 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 not the phone. I really want to answer. I want to answer this phone, not this one. And he pulls it out and he's like, Hey, honey, you know, like after we just proposed, he's like, this is, this is what you got into. Like, I'm going to have to leave in like, what was it? Like two days. Like we responded like that, right? So like, I think you're in country like the second or third of January and you were the first C5, I think, AIMS asset that was coming from the Conus going into Iraq. Yeah, I think the, the night beat us there. We were first, first on the West Coast. Yeah, so that was, that was a huge deal. And uh, that touched another member of our squad. I remember um, uh, Zampini, or Captain Zampini, went to go fly with the 89. His sister was a helicopter pilot in Al Assad that you guys went and like essentially rescued and provided some of those defensive measures so they could be protected uh, against that attack. So pretty, pretty big deal. Uh, so there was a first for, for Raj there, kind of one of a memorable, memorable event, maybe not your most favorite. Um, but it really kind of spoke to what our life is here in the double juice. Like it can change in a moment's notice. Um, along with that, we, we, as we were sitting in my office and reflecting six years, seven years ago, when you were, weren't quite in the squad, but you were just leaving the RPA, you were the first RPA going to Iraq. And that was when you started going back for the, the second time, third time, third time into, into Iraq. You were the first RPA and also the first kinetic RPA hitting there. So it, it's just a, it's a weird coincidence that we just kind of reflected on. It's the fun, it's a fun hour that I have with folks that are leaving. Uh, just kind of reflect back and think. Uh, advice to squatter, right? This again speaks to, to Roger's character is, uh, and listen, there's, there's some wisdom here, guys. Opportunity will find you if you work and you study hard. I call that a disciplined work ethic. Some people call that luck. But those of us that have a disciplined work ethic know that luck is just a, a four-letter word. You know what I mean? That we kind of tag on things that, that just kind of happen. We know it just doesn't happen. There's opportunities that, that uh, arise, but if you work hard and you bust your butt, much like Roger Ray did when he showed up here as an RPA pilot, never flown, you know, an actual aircraft outside of pilot training, and busted his ass to be one of the most junior co-pilots, and then five and a half years later, the most experienced pilot in this organization, the most experienced C5 pilot on the installation. That's saying something, right? So uh, it's a hats off to him, where just the work ethic will get you a long way. And being a good, a good leader, a good, a good gal. That, that's important too, because you can work hard, but you got to work hard together. You got to cooperate to graduate. And you graduate multiple times. Say so the word graduate multiple times throughout your life. But it's having that family and your teammates with you, along with you, to, to celebrate. Uh, another piece of advice: uh, keep a positive mindset and be open-minded to possibilities and futures. A lot of our future, you say right now, is kind of unknown. Like, I don't know what's going to happen in the next three months. Is COVID going to go away? I don't think so. Right, but we prepare, we keep an open mind, we do what we can, you know, we text our buddies, we, we call, we do little events like burger burns. We try to keep that hope up and keep an open mind to the future because guess what? If you don't, you kind of get beat down. Right? And that's no way to live. That's no way to live your life in the Air Force. 
Um, so that's a good mindset that, that he wanted to kind of pass along. Um, and then just to kind of wrap it up is things work out for good, usually better than you'd expect if you kind of keep that mindset and you incorporate that into your daily life. Work hard, study hard, keep an open mindset, maintain hope and prepare for the future. Things are just going to kind of come your way and things are going to land in your lap. You're going to go, huh, this, I feel lucky. It's not luck. It's you prepared yourself. You made the hard work. You got all that done. You worked for your team. So an opportunity presents itself, you're ready to capture onto that opportunity and capitalize it. Okay, much like what Roger Ray is doing next for us in the Air Force. It's going to stay in reserves and he's going to help us uh, over there with SimStar uh, and the, uh, the simulator. So, without further ado, we got a couple things to do here. Make it official. Because we've got the uh, often imitated, never replicated detail with the double deuce on it. So, hey, brother, uh, it's, it's sad for me to, to give this to you. Uh, but it's, it's bittersweet because I know you're going to stay in the family. You're going to be over the pre-12, uh, flying with us in the future, uh, flying missions with us in the future, because you're going to be teaching all of us, including me, over in the sim uh, with DRG and SimStar. So I'm going to have to double do Congrats, Nancy. Awesome. here. Uh, we'll see how this goes. If I can get it all out. Uh, 20 second will ask a lot, but I'll also give a lot. So, you know, come to work, put in your 110% every day. And then when you need that day off, you need time for your family or whatever, you know, they're going to be here to help you. So, you know, thank you for all that. You know, they were fully supportive of me separating, fully supportive of me uh, finding airlines, giving me letters of recommendation, letters of recommendation of, of 312, like helped me out getting into DRG. I think you guys helped me out too. Like I've heard people going over the Hi, Rogers. Thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, like I've been through a lot of the squadron. Uh, I think I've done like two and a half assignments in the Air Force. So you know, preach and hear, and that's it. So I think pretty uncommon for a 13-year major to only have done that. Uh, but in the time here, like you know, I've done lots of jobs, but also gone through lots of life stuff. So got here, got all my flying done. Uh, got divorced, got remarried. Like done it all. Here in the last six years, so uh, this place very much feels like my home and my place to come to and take solace. And I have all of you guys, uh, and I've seen this uh, this room probably change out two or three times since I've been here. Uh, but no matter what, the energy in the 20 seconds still the 20 seconds. So no matter who's here, it's always still uh, my home and where I feel comfortable with and happy to always show up and see a smiling face uh, and come to work. So uh, if you need it, they're here. Just uh, work hard and speak up if you need. You need some support. Uh, let's see, something else. So back when I was at Creech, uh, I worked in the CSS and executive, and I worked for a, a guy who was a bike commander. He is now a squadron commander, but he told me early on, embrace the suck, and then the only other thing you can get is every day just gets a little worse the next day. Uh, and sometimes it's true. <laughs> I see it true a lot. Uh, so just keep a good attitude. Uh, not everything we do, Red is fun or glamorous. Uh, I.e., like the D eight or those remember stand up spear and quake. Like it's not fun, right? But we do it, uh, and we're here to serve. So just remember that. COVID happened. Flying has a whole different flavor than what it used to feel like. Uh, but we're still here to serve. We're still going out, flying those missions. Uh, whether you're bringing HR back from uh, the Middle East to something like you ever you ever done, that's really impactful. Like you definitely know something's happening. We're standing there at the ramp of the plane, and you're hearing families cry. Uh, you made that difference. You helped get those uh, people back where they needed to be. So those times you're flying empty, you're like, what the hell are we doing? And you just got to trust you're doing something. <laughs> you're doing something. You're doing something. You know what? There's a bigger plan out there. So. Uh, but at the end, 
you know, there's people out there who would literally kill to do what we do. So we are lucky to come here, you know, check in with the gate guards, uh, salute, you know, those guys are there for us, come here, we got all the guys downstairs taking care of the jets for us. And it's really easy to go off the plane and feel frustrated or pissed or upset when the plane's not ready for us or things are broken, they can't get parts. TC doesn't know what the mission's doing. Uh, it's really easy to lose that focus uh, and get upset. But you're here, we get paid to fly airplanes around the world, like it's super cool. Um, there's people who would love to do what we do. Uh, and like a lot of that didn't really hit me until like I interview with American Airlines, I show up, I'm there and I'm with a bunch of regional pilots and they like were in awe, like, oh my God, like you're definitely getting hired, like we can't even compete with you. <laughs> and like you fly the C5, like that plane is so cool. Uh, so I mean, it's, it's cool to get that perspective and like sometimes we lose it when we're here, we're like in our uh, little safe shell of doing what we do and how it's like the bitch, so you know, that can get easy. Uh, but you know, big picture, like that plane is awesome. Uh, and it's, uh, it's great to get to do what we do. Uh, that takes me to the plane here. So, you know, we talked about what makes the 22nd grade, like we talked about people change, but uh, the unit stays the same, it stays awesome. I think it has a lot to do with this plane. So no matter what happens to us, where we go, what we do, we're with the crew. So we got the pilots, loads, the engineers. It could be the crappiest day in the world, but you find a case of beer and like a tent and there's like wherever, and it's gonna be an okay night. And you're gonna get through that together and work through it together. So I think if there's, the plane brings us to a lot of the extra connectedness that maybe you'd get in the C-17 where they have one load or the 10 where like the booms on like the other end of the plane, like we all kind of get to hang out and do our thing and uh, be a family together. Uh, so we got that going for us here. So and then uh, lastly, complete with this is like a you know, simple statement to just be good. So uh, be good to your family. So, you know, we're going to go out, work hard, go through a lot of crappy things. And then, you know, maybe you get a night out in London or, you know, do whatever. Uh, your family's going to come home. They're still missing you no matter what you're doing. They're not going to come back and get an air medal or, you know, things that we're going to get help us out. So they're the ones like really taking a lot of the pain that we go through and they feel it a lot. So you know, be sure to take care of them. Uh, be good to each other. Uh, be good at what you do, what you talked about, and be good to the unit. So uh, I've tried to do my best for the 22nd. I told uh, Colonel Damon like four years ago, like, hey, I'm, I'm going to separate, but I'm, I'm here for you to the end. Uh, and I want to work hard. So I kept doing that, and I felt like the 22nd never gave up on me, uh, even though I was leaving. <laughs> uh, so, sir, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>
for like locals, plan the day prior to do a briefing with both the uh, pilots and engineers, whether you're load flying for currency or something, that's a crew event, right? So everybody needs to know what their responsibilities are during those events, especially since we have never done backing training before. So that's something unique. And ERCCs we don't do very often. So make sure you guys have that crew coordination so you don't go out there and everybody's fumbling around with the checklist, what's gonna happen in what, what series. Uh, next thing, you may have seen the email about the required gear. So your ANC bags, they're, I think they're checking them out today from the fishbowl, the conference room. They're going to go through some ANC bags, make sure you guys have all your stuff updated, swap out stuff that's overdue. And then also, um, when you get put on a mission, the ADOs create a mission support request. And what that has is like your ALEPs and for loadmasters, your helmets. Make sure you guys pick that stuff up because AFE is spending their days getting all that stuff ready for crews, right? And if you guys aren't picking it up, you're just wasting their time, right? And it's required gear that we have to take. So even if you're flying to Hawaii, um, you may get turned and get either sent all the way around back to the Middle East or get sent across. I actually had that happen on a one alpha one about three years ago. Uh, we flew from Andrews to Palm Springs, came back to Andrews to drop the secret service off. And they're like, hey, guess what? You're going eastbound. And we're like, oh shit, we don't have our stuff. And we still had to fly it, but um, we didn't have our gear at the time. So uh, guns, ALEPs, helmets, all that stuff, make sure you guys have everything in your ANC bags. And a lot of people um, know you don't need your uh, sleep bags anymore, but you may get stuck in somewhere that you want to use it, right? Whether it's Afghanistan or IUD, we're progressing those locations a lot more now. Uh, another push for no baseball caps on the road, so patrol caps only. Um, I know mine looks very fresh because I've never worn it, so <laughs> this is the first time I bring that thing out. So make sure you guys swap your heads out. Uh, nine alpha, so who in here knows what a nine alpha is if you're nine alpha? Anybody? A couple people in the front row and our retired senior. Uh, so nine alpha, if you were Denif for an extended period of time, uh, you're gonna go what they call it, nine alpha, which is an airman uh, for enlisted awaiting retraining. So if you've been extended Denif, because you can't fly for various reasons, a nine alpha zero 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 is without um, out of your control, right? So you're gonna have whatever medical is going on with you, uh, you're gonna be put in a system awaiting retraining. And AFPC, within 20 days, they're gonna pull your name and they're gonna put you in a job that they need you. And I looked through it this morning, the jobs that need they need most besides flyers, security forces and aircraft maintenance. So that's what they're gonna pull you for if you're unable to fly, but you're able to still work. Um, and then nine alpha one zero zero is something within your control. So like academic failures and stuff um, that they see is within your control, they'll put you in a different category and then you'll be awaiting retraining based on that. Um, and yeah, and that came from headquarters Air Force. That is not something in the squadron that we're pushing. It came from the very top for the nine alpha. Uh, so if, if you're extended to NIF and you don't actually have a reason, make sure you go uh, get checked with flight dog and find a reason to get back to flying so you don't get put in that situation uh, to do something that you don't want to do. Uh, with that, have a great weekend. Uh, stop by and see me if you have any questions. One more. More. <laughs> A uh, few few things, right? So so the nine alpha thing, right? Pregnancy is not considered a reason to go nine alpha, uh, just just for that. And then um, right, other things if you if you have certain issues, right? Even if they're valid issues, right? That's fine. You can still be a member of the Air Force. It's just like you're taking a position from somebody else who can fill that position, right? That's the reason that we nine alpha people. It's like you can still be a maintainer. You just can't fly. So that's the reason you nine alpha people, right? Because um, you're taking that spot from somebody else. So that's why the, the nine alpha thing exists. Um, Chief Master in the Air Force, Joanne Bass is gonna be visiting. I sent out an announcement on uh, Slack. So if you're tech savvy, uh, just just hit me up, let me know. Uh, you're gonna be working with a senior uh, writer over the 21st for that visit. So that is that. Um, happy birthday, Hayden Proctor Hartman. I don't know if you guys are in here or not. There she is, right? Hey! Burgers on me today. Get that peanut butter burger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Muley Day. Okay, so not this Muley Day, right? This Muley Day is still small teams. Um, if you go on Slack, 
Uh, if you look at pinned messages on Slack, there's tons of clubs, right? I talk about this all the time, I'm kind of sick of talking about it, but I feel like people still don't know. In the pin section, there's like biking, hiking, chess club. I see the chess club all the time, so shout out to the chess club, <laughs> killing it uh, on the Muley Day. But next Muley Day in March, uh, we got the super rad snow day, okay? So 21 March, it's a Sunday. So if you look, it's free for military. So it's free, it's absolutely free. Um, and then if you go to, so on the resort, rentals, right, are 62 bucks, right? That's a lot, right? But there's a little ski shop about 20 minutes on the way to the resort and rentals are only 30 bucks, right? So skis, poop, boots, and poles, or your board boots for $30. So you can go skiing or snowboarding for $30, right? Uh, the ticket's free and then the gear will cost you that, right? Um, I'm, I still rock my BDU pants on the mountain. People make fun of me a little bit, but I don't care. And then, uh, so you can wear your Gore-Tex ski jacket, right? All that kind of stuff. So the goal here is to get everybody involved. Uh, so the, the cost is only 30 bucks to get up there. Uh, it's a two hour and 17 minute drive from Travis Air Force Base. Uh, if you got kids, I'll send this flyer out. Kids and all adults and all that is up there. And then tubing and sledding, even uh, if you don't want to go snowboarding or skiing, uh, it's 50 bucks. Pretty pricey in my opinion, but maybe you just want to come up and hang out, right? And, uh, and go tubing or sledding. The cool thing is they actually like chairlift you up, so it's not like the old school where you got to walk up the hill like this is Gucci. So you just like tube down and uh, chairlift up. And then here's some uh, some prices. So the thing is, we're gonna go up on Sunday, ski all day, right? Get together, do like a group dinner, either that night or maybe a group lunch. I called around, reservations are still kind of limited in California, but we'll try to make something work. Uh, and then you can get double queen beds at the Hard Rock Hotel, the Mont Blue Resort Casino, uh, Holiday Inn's 113 bucks. So if you get uh, yourself, some of your buddies, right, divide that by four, uh, it's pretty cheap too. So does anybody have any questions? They rent like bibs. I ain't talking about the EU pants. They rent bibs at this uh, equipment rental place. Um, they rent like helmets, goggles, right? All the snow gear, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know about bibs specifically. I don't wear bibs. I just wear pants, right? I wear a sweatshirt and like a rain jacket. Like you don't need all this like, oh, you gotta have snow gear. Like you don't need it, right? Like people are up there snowboarding t-shirts, right? When it's warm enough. So so there's a lot of like misconceptions uh, about that. So like I, I wear a, a rain jacket, I wear my BDU pants, right? If you got fancy gear, you can wear fancy gear, but you don't need all the super specialized gear. What's up? There's a super cheap place you can go. It's um, uh, Sierra Training Post. Yeah. They're actually out of Reno, but they sell online. And right now, a ton of their ski jackets and stuff like that are, are pointers. So okay. Just a thought for y'all. If y'all really want to go do it, it's, I mean, 50, 60% off pointers. Kind of yeah. Nice. Thank you. Cool. Uh, if you do participate in this, Monday's a trial day back. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So if you go up there on Sunday, uh, and you spend the night if you want to spend the night right uh it's it's about another 30 minutes in the south lake um and you go spend the night have fun up there uh, the next day back right wake up get breakfast and then just just travel back home uh, if you want to i'm gonna hit up the mountain again uh and kind of double dip on that but uh if not and then obviously the bowling alley if you don't want to go up there and ski snowboard do whatever then monday we're gonna do bowling uh, on base. So so that'll kind of be either ski snowboard, uh, bowling's on Monday, or uh, we come in and work, which is super fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Sorry. My question, Cole? Hit me, sir. What are BDUs? <laughs> uh, I, I noticed Chewy's in the crowd. I'm going to do this one last time for you. Oh, geez. You got it? 
That's just it's <laughs> inside joke. Sorry. <clears throat> so uh, I do not have an inspirational speech for you today. Uh, I have a commercial instead. So sorry about that. So. Uh, I'm going to make a quick plug. The Chief Pilot Office, your friendly neighborhood Chief Pilot Office, radical change is coming. Captain Shoney is moving on to support flight as an assistant flight commander, and the venerable Lily Forlini is now going to be an executive officer. So don't worry, I'm not going to be left all alone in my office because you're still going to come by and see me. But uh, we'll also have Tyler Weaver coming back uh, and joining the team. So uh, I've already ordered his uh, hand-painted portrait, and it'll go up on the wall uh, with the rest of them. So stop by and check it out. So what I'm going to talk about right now, because uh, I couldn't just do a simple commercial, tell you like and subscribe to Double News Cloud, I had to give you a lesson in the evolution of communication and information. So uh, we've come a long way in 32,000 years, but uh, I really want to get to you about the intent of why these things occurred cave drawings back in the day, it wasn't enough to just go out and take down a woolly mammoth. But at some point, the dude was like, dude, that was freaking awesome. Let's put it on the wall and then people would be like, man, they killed that woolly mammoth. Or maybe a more altruistic way to say it is they're like, well, let's write down the instructions so our kids can kill woolly mammoths and make coats and rugs and wear it with their BDU. <laughs> Something else that isn't on here is uh, right around here, right around 800 to 1000 AD uh, was the printing press. This was huge. Why was it huge? It took knowledge from very elite people, from the church and aristocrats, and it gave the information to people. It allowed people to learn and grow. Uh, eventually, we, we had the internet come online in 1969, so it was kind of a long time ago. Uh, when the internet started, not that big of a deal. Information was held by tech elites. Information was controlled by publishers and academia. But over time, for good or for bad, uh, <laughs> uh, we, we started to see some of the democratization of information and communication. People were able to access and share with each other. And one can make an argument whether or not the tech elites still control information, but that's something we can talk about later. But positive effects of the democratization of information, number one, it broke the monopoly. The information was not in the hands of the privileged few. Number two, drove down the cost of education. So, you know, how easy is it now to go online and get a degree as opposed to very privileged families would get into institutions and they would excel and, and control wealth information. Also, archiving. You've heard the phrase that history is written, written by the victors, right? Uh, just think how much of human history has been lost just to time, to fires. Now we're able to archive things and pass them and learn from the past. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, it enhances connections, again, for good or for bad. A lot of great things out there where people can remain connected. Uh, I'm just thinking about uh, right when COVID started hitting hard, uh, and, and some may have a story like this, uh, my uncle got uh, really sick, and it's right around Easter, and me and my kids uh, got together on the couch, and uh, we said goodbye. We, we got to say goodbye. And that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have uh, that technology available to us. There are some negatives. Anyone see The Social Dilemma? If you haven't seen it, watch it. I watched about half of it last night. I'm freaked out. So <laughs> privacy, manipulation, there, there are some downsides. Um, so uh, this slide. This uh, brings me to the Double Deuce Cloud. Has anyone seen this or heard about it? There's a lot of hands not up of people. So come on out and watch some videos. But uh, it is a resource for you for the squadron uh, in many different ways. Basically, what we did is took some of the communication information ideas and we scaled them to the squadron level. And we've seen the Air Force doing this just the past couple of years, whether it's John Q. Public, Ned Stark, Chief Wright and Chief Bass, you see them engaging with people on an individual level through social media, through different, different medias. So we talked about democratization and how does that apply to the squadron? We've broken down the monopoly of information. When we were lieutenants, like if you wanted the inside track on assignments, if you wanted the inside track on schools, like you had to be close to the commander, you had to be close to the chief, that, that good old boy network, that's where that came from. We're shattering those walls now. 
where anyone can go on and listen to the commander speak, listen to the chief the senior speak. You have access to that information. Driving down the cost of education. Again, if you had a good mentor, good. If you had a good supervisor, good. But maybe you didn't. You didn't have access to that mentorship. Now the commander can reach out and mentor 100 pilots at once, some of which may be sitting in Diego. And if they have a decent internet connection, boom, they can be there at an officer call. Archiving. How many CTs, how many mentorship sessions have been lost over the years that uh, I had a note in my notebook, some colonel gave this thing, but I don't really have the context. Now you can come back and listen to, I don't know, Tyler Will talk about NTA ops. You can listen to Colonel Trump will talk about this, that, and the other. You, you have the access. We're not going to lose that information. We're going to build it over time. And then enhancing connections. So that's the weird part we haven't really wrapped our mind around yet. So if I can get the slide. Um, I'm going to make a, uh, a plug for some people who haven't seen what's out there. I mean, we, we've got our all calls. We have promotions, heritage huddles. We can go back and look at farewells and remember people fondly. Uh, and it's not only our user created content. We link with TED Talks, motivational videos. Where are they now? We had one yesterday with previous members coming back and talking. Uh, the CT archive, senior leaders. We've had a wing commander. We've had a group commander. We've had a numbered Air Force commander. Uh, we're trying to get all these people in. You can hear their perspectives. What was cool was the fiery back. Everyone remembers the fiery back. And the spouses were a little traumatized by that, right? And, and I got to sit down with my wife and on my TV, pull up Colonel Simmons and be like, here's what was going on behind the scenes. She found it super fascinating. Uh, a little bit of military history we've been delving into. And if you're looking for practical stuff, like none of this really applies to me, EPR writing, seven habits of highly effective people, coaching, tough conversations, writing, public speaking, mm -hmm. resilient families, the assignment process, contractor jobs, how to use LinkedIn. We have 112 videos to date because I just uploaded another one last night. All that information is at your fingertips. If I can get the slide. So the future, I mean, people people look at our cloud and they think it's just it's just PD, senior PD, joint officer, and listen to PD. It is not only that. The culture piece. We talk about culture. Culture. Now we've been able to capture it and export it. Maybe you miss a area title. Maybe you're missing this right now. You can come back and watch it later. The mentorship. Now we've we've been able to increase the the reach and the, the tentacles of supervisors to be able to reach out and touch more people. And this is the last bit that I hope we can close the loop on is the lifestyle piece. Mealy clubs, uh, a history channel, a cooking channel, a sports channel, whatever it is. I'm going to be gone in three, four months. I want to give this to the squadron. If you are out there and you want to create content, come talk to me, come talk to the other RMs. We will say, I will teach you how to use a rudimentary video production uh, software and get it out there and create that community. That's part of the functional and technical know-how on how to do it. The motivation and incentive is kind of up to you to take this thing and run with it. And then at the end, you're going to have members participating and contributing and really becoming this, this cultural platform for the double deuce. Uh, slide. What slide? Oh, damn. Disregard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had one more. I right. said slide. <laughs> 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 uh, anyone ever heard of uh, Prometheus? Not the movie, but kind of the legend of Prometheus. So, Almost every tradition in uh, in the world has a story like Prometheus. Basically, Prometheus was was a lesser god. He took the secret of making fire. He gave it to humanity, and the gods schwacked him for it. Um, which is a fancy way of me trying to say that there are positives and negatives to this sort of thing. Um, knowledge has its repercussions. The first one is uh, transparency. God, we love transparency, right? Um, but the commander is taking risk by having this kind of platform out there. There's talks that he gives where he is extremely blunt. He gives peeps behind the curtain. There's stuff, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little loose. I'm drinking a little wine when I'm doing my PDs. I don't know if someone's going to come back and be like, look what this colonel said. But we're doing it because it's right. We want to get the information out there. We want to give it to you. Uh, but we are taking a little risk. Uh, the second thing is, uh, <laughs> and this falls on the people, is uh, as information, this stuff becomes the norm, uh, you need to keep up, you need to take ownership of it. Uh, there's no excuses anymore. Like, I, I didn't know is, is not a valid excuse. We're, we're putting everything on the table for you to use. So please uh, use it and grab it. Uh, I hope this wasn't 
too bad of a commercial for you. I just want to say uh, I'm happy to be in a unit dedicated to transparency, sharing, and kind of lifting everyone up. So if you're interested in participating, creating, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, stop by and visit us. So thanks. <laughs> This Friday started, so that, that was one of the best Cosmo moments that I think we've had here at an all call. So, one more round. <laughs> so, uh, squadrons just they don't have they don't have we don't have Cosmos, right? We, we have Cosmo. The Knight's going to get to him soon when he goes over to get the DO there. Uh, but they don't have these programs, like they just don't have them. We, when we presented that to Colonel Simmons, what was that five months ago? Six months ago, he was like, "This is badass." And then we had Johnson come in. And he's like, "I know this is badass. This is, this is more badass than I thought." And then we had General Bibb show up last month, and he's like, "I'm, I'm blown away. How many videos do you guys have? Like five or six?" We're like, "No, sir. We have like a hundred. Like, what? How long have you been doing this? We're like, uh, like, I don't know, eight, nine months, a year. You know, it hasn't been that much. We've just been accelerating a lot of this communication, this transparency. Uh, and w when I took command nine months ago." And I told you guys that I'm not just going to invest in you as, as airmen, as aviators. We're going to invest in you as people. Like the proof's in the pudding. Like all you got to do is reach out. All you got to reach out and look. When you drive back to SAC, you live in SAC, you drive back to Fairfield on your trek somewhere, just pull it up. You're listening to other little podcasts. Pull one of these up and just listen in the background. You don't have to see the visuals. Just listen to it. There's a lot of information we put out there. I, I do take a little bit of risk when I put this stuff out because what I say now is record. And it's available to anybody who wants to get on on the cloud and listen. Uh, but I want you guys to see this stuff. It takes a lot of effort. I promise you, the people that record all this stuff and upload it and prep all that tech that go the extra mile. I just need you to listen to it. Cool. All right. Uh, a few more admin pieces. Muley days, right? So so thanks for uh, Senior Reinbold for kind of putting this together. Research. He's a busy guy, but he cares about you guys. The lifestyle piece, the quality of service, the quality of life is important. I asked him to put it together like in a day, and he did. Uh, so just to reiterate, if you do go up and you spend the night, you can travel back that next day. You don't have to be in the squadron. Uh, that said, we're going to try and get some Unite funds that we'll see for that March 22nd event that's in the bowling alley. So it's going to be free there as well. That's our plan. So you can bowl free, you'll be able to eat free. That's kind of what we're trying to get after with that team building exercise. So if you go, you can go on Sunday to travel back that morning, and then about 1 o'clock probably we'll start on that Monday for that uh, uh, Muley Day together, a first one together in like, I think the whole time since I've been in command, it's the first time we've been together because COVID has been, been a thing. But uh, mm -hmm. I was able to talk to Colonel Simmons and other kind of flying squadron parents and said, hey boss, can we open a few things on base before we get tired of this COVID thing? Can we take a little risk and you listen to us? And he said, okay, I'm gonna tell my FSS commander to open it up. So we're doing it. We're, he's rehiring people, getting that thing spun back up uh, for us to go take part. So it's, it's a big deal, I want you guys to participate. Participate in the small group Muley Clubs on Monday, okay? Remember the ROEs, if you don't go to one of those small club Muley Days, you're in the squadron with me probably and everybody else. We're doing a little bit of work, um, which is fine. If you do that, that's good. But we'll probably start around noon on that uh, on that Muley Day to go out and have some fun and do some stuff and collaborate and be together because that's what we need to do uh, as part of those small teams. Okay, uh, we got Ricky, Mr. Ricky Montel Torres, uh, who is a retired math sergeant. Who's showing up, uh, I think, next week, I believe, as a classroom instructor. Uh, we got him black flight suits. It's going to be awesome. He's going to have black patches if you like the double deuce ninja. Uh, and the classroom <laughs> instructor rolling around. He's going to be back in the old supply. So, uh, those of you in transition flight, student load masters, uh, he's going to be uh, uh, one of your new leaders back there because uh, he's got a, a wealth of knowledge, both being as a master sergeant, but also as an evaluator load master. One of our more experienced load masters that retired three years ago. We've got him back as a GS9, step three, it's a big deal. Um, so make sure you guys are, are uh, wanting to pay attention to him too. We see him, welcome him back to the Double Deuce. He's a, he's a Double Deuce alumni. That's good news for us. Computers, I already talked to it. When you guys disperse from this office and you go back to your, your workspaces, flip the laptop over. If you haven't one, I have one at home, flip it over, record the serial number, reply to the Slack message that was sent out two days ago. It was Tuesday. Okay, we sent out Tuesday on announcements, reply in the thread with the serial number and anything else, just the serial number. We're trying to get new computers, guys, so we have to have accountability of the old ones first, all right? So, full we'll court press, I need you guys to do that, okay? All right, 
almost done here. Uh, the 9 Alpha thing for for the 365 days or more, that's Headquarters Air Force Initiative. It's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, this is a Air Force-wide thing for crewmates, aviators, and pilots, and et cetera, and navigators, WISOs, to get folks that have been in it for a long period doing something else uh, because we have a shortage of flyers that we have to have uh, in the cockpit, uh, in the cargo box, you know, sit in the panel, et cetera, around the Air Force. So this is a this is a Headquarters Air Force initiative, and they're serious about it. So if you have more questions, talk to your supervisor, uh, the superintendent, or the chief, or the, uh, the chief pilot. Uh, the Tuskegee event. This is a huge deal. I'm going to end this on a high note. So uh, there was a lot of work that went into getting this aircraft reserved for this off-station trainer that's going down to Charleston. It's also going to Cecil Field in Jacksonville, Florida. There's a lot of outreach. It's almost like, you know, kind of an air show combined with heritage, combined with some fellowship. Uh, it, it's, it's a righteous event. And I'm just super proud of that team under, under Captain Brown to go out and do that. Um, we're going to do, make this an annual thing. We didn't get to do it last year because we didn't have an instructor pilot or an aircraft commander to go uh, lead this thing, but we obviously do now with, with, with Captain Brown. Um, so um, he's going to come back. Uh, they'll be back on Sunday night. Next Friday, uh, we're going to have him brief the squad. We'll probably play a heritage video uh, and just kind of dedicate that all call to kind of celebrating what, what they did uh, during that, that two-day event because it's going to be awesome. They have an original Husky here and speaking to them. Uh, that's going to be at Charleston Air Force Base under Colonel Rue, who's the wing commander there, who really put a lot of this together. We're also transporting 15 other members from uh, Travis Air Force Base, including the CRG across the street, uh, the 9th Air Squadron, the 6th, the uh, 21st, and also the OSS. So 15 total other folks that are traveling with them as Mission Essential personnel. So it's, it's, it's a big event. It's awesome. And if you haven't checked your news yet uh, today, this morning, Yesterday, KC-10 went up and had a heritage flight, uh, which was the guy from some publicity locally with uh, Sacramento News with CBS, I think. So that's uploaded if you want to take a Google and check that out. So uh, awesome events, very righteous, the right cause, the right thing to do. And we're going to learn more about it next week when they get to the debrief the squadron. So with that, any other questions going around the room? I don't want to, we're well under an hour. Questions about stuff kind of coming up. There's hints of an exercise next week, so just you know, stand by. It's probably gonna be Wednesday or Thursday uh, with some gates closing down and things like that. So I'll keep you guys tuned up on Slack. So make sure you're watching Slack announcements. Um, anybody else in the front row? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, that's all I got, guys. Reach out to your family and friends. I don't have this message for Heritage Shuttle. Uh, slide into the the the, the wholesome DM. Uh, <laughs> talk talk to each other. Look out for each other. We've got some inclement weather this weekend. Um, you guys carry on, okay? Have a great weekend. Carry on.